Welcome back to Mets, Nets, Jets, D podcast coming to you Friday. Thank TJF Friday, bro. Thank God it's Friday. We're here. We're back. We have a huge, huge weekend. We have an NBA slate tonight, and then I'm going to give you my my NFL conference championship picks. Um, let's get to this money, all right? We did not do well yesterday. You can see it on Twitter at Mets, Nets, Jets, D. Uh, the Jazz fell through, and the parlay was a little bit risky and and, and, and did not come through as well. But we're going to move on. Um, don't expect them to win every freaking day, especially coming off a 1.3 weekend. Like, that's all right. We're going to get back to it. Uh, Friday, boost up our freaking uh, bankroll. Starting with the Chicago Bulls against the 76ers. Um, a 7-10 start. So that's why I'm doing this a little bit earlier. Um, we have the Bulls coming in pretty big, pretty big underdog, seven and a half. I understand. Uh, 76ers, uh, Ben Simmons, Jay Rich, Tobias Harris, Al Horford. They're playing very good basketball right now, even with Aldrell Embiid, who has that finger um, issue. Um, the Chicago Bull team is a little bit hampered. All they really have to worry about is Zach Levine, Sadoransky's uh, game time decision. Marketing should play, but you got to wait closer to tip off to find out that information. I'm leaning towards the money line on the 76ers here. Uh, not feeling that confident that they cover the spread just so you just get a win. Um, I'm definitely liking the just the 76ers money line on that uh, in that first matchup. Uh, next game. We have the Minnesota Timberwolves against the Indiana Pacers. This is the second leg of a home to home, and I've noticed that these home to homes they usually they tend to split. Even if it's the Milwaukee Bucks versus the San Antonio Spurs, you think they sh- they should sweep both of those games? Obviously, you see an opponent back to back games, you're gonna know what to do. Um, so if you're feeling froggy, you take the money line of the Timberwolves. If not, I like the plus seven and a half in this matchup. Towns is, is questionable. He could play today. Um, other than that, I, I feel confident, um, in the Minnesota Timberwolves covering a number with Wiggins and Robert Covington, um, at the helm. Next game, we have the Washington Wizards against the Toronto Raptors. This spread came out at minus 10. It is currently at minus 11. It's moving up. People understand that this is an elite team against a very, very bad uh, Washington um, Eastern Conference team. And you got to take advantage because the Toronto Raptors are somewhat healthy now. Pascal Siakam is back. Norman Powell is back. They're still missing um, Fred Van Vliet. But then you got to think about Marcus Saul is back as well. So you're running at pretty much 80%. Give me the Toronto Raptors and and to cover that number. Uh, Wizards are just gonna have to keep losing. Um, they they're they're hampered. They're missing a ton of players right now. Give me the Raptors at home and the number. Uh, next game we have the Miami Heat against the OKC Thunder. Uh, this one is a flip of the coin. Miami Heat is very good at home, but it it is a different story on the road. We're waiting on news on Steven Adams. Um, so I'm really leaning towards the Thunder. Uh, they've been playing very, very well. Um, SGA has been doing triple doubles. Chris Paul looks like his old self. Danilo Gallinari is hitting threes. Uh, give me the momentum of the Thunder and the fact that they're home and they and Miami struggles a little more away. I understand that they have Jimmy Butler and Steven Adams is a question mark. But wait until that that final um, player mm-hmm. news report comes out so you know. But I'm feeling just the money line on the Thunder, okay? Next game, we have the Cleveland Cavaliers against the Memphis Grizzlies. Memphis Grizzlies, what, six-game winning streak right now? John Moran is showing up and showing out. They got Jaron Jackson Jr. Valachunas is hard to stop as long as they give him minutes. And Cleveland Cavaliers is one of the worst teams in the league, give me the Memphis Grizzlies um, to cover the number as well. Give me that eight and a half. I think I took it at eight. But um, if you're one, if you want to take the risk, take the points. If not, take the money line. I see the Grizzlies winning this game pretty handily um, against the Cleveland Cavaliers. 
Uh, next game, we have the Atlanta Hawks against the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, 230 total. Uh, they can play at a high pace. I would lean more to towards the over in this at minus 113. Uh, but I definitely think the Spurs win this game. The Spurs have a 21 uh, game home winning streak against the Atlanta Hawks. So if you think that trend is going to end, I don't think so. Um, LaMarcus Aldridge is going to be key in this game, uh, big against the Atlanta Hawks. If you're looking at player props, um, look at LaMarcus Aldridge. He should go off in this game. I'm, I'm guessing 20 points and at least 10 rebounds and some peripherals. Uh, give me the San Antonio Spurs over the Atlanta Hawks at home uh, against this bad um, Atlanta Hawks team. Trey Young will pull up a fight. But he doesn't have the horses to beat uh, San Antonio Antonio Spurs. Last but not least, we have the Dallas Mavericks against the Portland Trail Blazers. This one's a little tricky. Uh, Even though I love Luka Doncic, um, the Portland Portland Trail Blazers did have a big win against the Rockets the last game. Uh, But the key news is that Christos Porzingis is out. But I'm still on the Dallas Mavericks side. I just don't know if I should take the points or not. I think eight is a lot. Um, I would bump it up for Portland if you want to take that side and get a closer to like 100 uh, type of line. So you can bump that plus eight to like plus 10 and still get like 170 minus 170. And that's not bad. Um, So it's either I definitely think the Mavericks will win. But if you want to take the points to get a better number, you take the, the points on the Trailblazer side. okay, and bump it up to like 10, 11, just where you feel comfortable. Um, then we come into football Sunday. I cannot wait. We have the first game. We have the Tennessee Titans. Uh, let me see if I get it to it. We have the Tennessee Titans against the Kansas city chiefs, Tennessee. You did, you've done a great job. You won me a lot of money. I appreciate the run that you went on. You beat the Patriots. You beat the Baltimore Ravens, but this is where it stops. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs are a whole nother monster. You beat them in the regular season, but Mahomes and Andy Reid are on a mission, and that it's not even a it's like a quartet. It's Kelsey, Tyreek Hill, Miko Hardman, Damian Williams. You got a problem. Um, I love Derrick Henry running that ball, but I think it's just too much too much to keep up with. Uh, this Kansas City, high-octane Kansas City offense in Kansas City. Um, that's a whole nother, it's a whole nother monster in Arrowhead. Give me the Kansas City Chiefs and the point spread. I think they handle the Tennessee Titans. They put a very good run, but traveling two road games and now another game in Arrowhead and facing one of the best quarterbacks in the league. And y'all don't have a secondary. That's that's what I'm talking about. Like, you face two teams that Patriots don't have weapons. They can't stretch the field. And Lamar Jackson is one-dimensional with the read option and running the ball, and he can't throw. So now you're facing a team that can throw. Give me the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, last but not least, we have the Green Bay Packers traveling to the San Francisco 49ers. Everyone's talking about these 49ers, and I understand. They have a great defense. They have a solid running game. But the question mark is the quarterback. Jimmy Garoppolo turns that ball, turns the ball over a little bit too much for my comfort. And if I'm betting against Jimmy Garoppolo and Aaron Rodgers, I'm taking Aaron Rodgers. Give me the Green Bay Packers to come into Levi Stadium Coming home. Aaron Rodgers coming home. He's a California kid. He wanted to get drafted by the 49ers. He got skipped in 2005. The 49ers had a chance to get him. They skipped him and took Alex Smith. This man is on a mission, and he's petty like that. He said it earlier this season that we're going to have to go through um, the 49ers, and look what happened. You get your, He gets his opportunity, and he's going to put his money where his mouth is. He even said it the draft day. He said the 49ers, for the fact that they didn't draft him, they're going to regret it. Give me 
the Green Bay Packers, giving me Aaron Rodgers to build on his legacy and get a number, another opportunity in the Super Bowl. Okay. And I'm taking the money line on that, obviously. So those are my picks this week. Thank you guys for checking in. Uh, I will post up my parlays for today a little bit later on Instagram at MessNetJSD. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, MessNetJSD. Um, RunDFS.com. Go sign up. Log in. Sign up for that weekly pass. Get in the Discord chat and get connected. Me and Gundacker will be there for you. And uh, I'll see you guys Monday. Martin Luther King Day, all right? Um, so good luck. Peace out. Let's get it.